Hello lovelies. Today I want to talk to you about a subject that is near and dear to my heart. Costuming, or sewing in general, when you're broke. I remember when I first was interested in starting in the sort of fiber arts community online, and I went to a fairly popular forum to look up some advice on how to get started, how to avoid spending too much money, especially on your initial projects, which are bound to be a little bit wonky because that's how you learn. And receiving a response that was extremely discouraging. This longtime member of the forum responded to my post and said, just remember, this is not a cheap hobby, so I can't help you. Hmm. Hmm. It didn't really sit right with me. I think that when it does come to actual historical reenactment, for example, if you are doing a Civil War reenactment, you have to have some element of authenticity and historical accuracy because it is meant to be educational at, at heart. But when you're a brand new costumer just wanting to make a gorgeous outfit like you've seen in a book or a film, and you're just dipping your toe in the community, maybe you just want to go to a Jane Austen ball or something like that. You don't have to lay out the cash for authentic, perfect wool. You don't have to grow and harvest and spin your own linen fibers and weave it into cloth for your outfit to be historically adequate. So today I'm going to share with you a few tips that I've come across during my first solid year properly being a sewist and costumer. And I'm also going to lay down some facts about how much I actually spent on this hobby in the year 2020. First tea. Hmm. I'm drinking out of a David's tea mug, but I'm drinking Harney and Sons tea. What a wild world. So tip number one, thrift stores and the online communities, these are your friends. This bit of friend, I need a haircut. These are your friends because so many people don't always know what they have. So they might be cleaning out a relative's house and they might stumble across some gorgeous fabric stash with antique or vintage woolens, cottons, linens, all that beautiful natural fiber goodness, maybe inauthentic vintage prints, and they don't know what to do with them. So they just will throw them up on Craigslist or Facebook Market just to get rid of them at a low price. You can find beautiful antique sewing machines and other equipment too on these online sites. Sometimes too, it will be someone who picked up a hobby and started investing money in it, but then realized maybe it's not for them so they're just trying to clear the space in their house because the space is more valuable to them now than having these things either way you can really get lucky i haven't had amazing experiences with either of these but i have had a lot of friends who have truly found treasures local consignment and thrift stores like goodwill can also be a good source of course it does depend a lot where you live so for example, the thrift stores around me always just seem to have some pretty hideous stuff from the 80s and 90s. Yeah, no, no beautiful antique treasures. But then again, it isn't a very affluent area. And it's a lot of people who commute into larger cities for work. So yeah, it's just not a great selection around me. Where I used to live, kind of in a more rural community, I actually found a lot more treasures because it was those kind of old family homes that people were clearing out. So always take a look periodically. You never know what you might find. And that brings me to number two. Don't restrict yourself to just looking for fabric, specifically yardage. Anything that's a textile is made of fabric and so could conceivably be reused. Now, I'm not telling you to take a beautiful antique like wedding gown and tear it apart to make a corset out of it. But some old tablecloths, some old blankets or quilts, those can have really nice fabric in them. And you're not just limited to secondhand. I love the Ikea as is section. I love it so much. 
IKEA as a section is sort of where anything they're clearancing out. So if a design isn't going to come back for the next season, they will put any remainders in the as is section, or if it was part of one of their home displays, you know, their little model homes and apartments. They'll take items from there once they are redoing them and they'll put it in the as is section, sometimes for half price, sometimes for 30% off, sometimes for 80 or 90% off. So from there, you can find curtains, bedding, duvets that are all appropriate to use for costuming. A lot of people use Ikea duvets, especially for 18th century costuming, because the floral patterns are actually quite similar to what would have been used at the time. It's a fairly historically accurate print, and many of them are 100% cotton, which also was a big textile in the 18th century. I myself have made a dress from a cotton Ikea curtain on this channel. I think that curtain was maybe $10, maybe less. I've also made an Edwardian shirtwaist from two pillowcases that I found with just a little bit of scrap fabric and lace added for the neckline. And I think that was maybe $10 total because it was two $5 pillowcases. But I needed a whole pillowcase just for the sleeves. Number three is going to be a little controversial. I think a lot of people disagree with me on this, but I think especially if you are starting out, it's worth it. Number three is to cheat on materials. Nowadays, fewer people are making their own clothing, so actually it is cheaper to buy clothing than make it in a lot of cases because of bulk ordering, sweatshop labor, and inferior materials. So you can pay $20 for a skirt that would take you $40 or $50 worth of materials to make at home. So things that are finer quality, like a nice wool or a silk, those are going to be very expensive. $20 a yard is an average starting price for these materials. And they can very easily go up to $50 or $60 a yard, depending on how fine the quality is. Don't do your first project with one of these. That's way too much pressure to put on yourself. And then you're going to be deeply attached to a project because of how much money you spent on it that you're either not going to want to finish it because of fear of failure or wasting of materials, or you're not going to want to remake it or fix it later. So don't do an expensive wool or silk project. I still think natural fibers are best because they lay and drape better, which will make it more accurate to whatever historical time period you're doing, if you're doing historical costuming, not everyone is. But also, it's going to be a lot more comfortable to wear if you're at a festival or a ball or a con, and you're wearing basically plastic all day, it's not going to be a good look. You're going to be very sweaty and uncomfortable. So cotton tends to be the cheapest natural fiber. And you can find different weights and textures of cotton, which can be pretty useful. Like a nice light cotton voile can be used as almost like a linen for under shifts and chemises. A uh, thick cotton flannel I've actually found is very useful for things like cloaks and capes. I made my winterberry cape out of a cotton flannel that I got on sale for $3 a yard. Is it wool? No, it doesn't have the water wicking properties that wool does. It doesn't have quite the same texture, but it has the heavier weight and drape that you would expect from an outerwear piece. So it is closer to wool than your average quilting cotton, for example, but it cost far less than the cheapest wool or even wool poly blend that I could find. So sometimes it's worth it to cheat just a little bit. Number four, use inexpensive hand tools. When I first started showing my friends the projects I was working on last year and saying like, this is, you know, this is my quarantine hobby. I've been wanting to get back into sewing. I started a little bit in 2019, but 2020 is the year I'm going to dedicate myself to really learning how to sew. And here's what I've been making so far. 
almost universally, I would get the response, oh, that sounds great. I would love to sew too, but I don't have a machine. Imagine their surprise when I told them that everything I made was made with this. All you really need to get started is a needle and some thread. Now there's a lot of discussion on the quality of your needles, the quality of your thread, and this is important and it does affect the quality of your work. However, to get started, you don't need to spend a month educating yourself on all the different kinds of needles and all the different kinds of thread. These little wheels of death are certainly not the best things in the world, but they do give you a variety of needle sizes. So you do have the room to experiment and see which one works for you, which one is comfortable for what kind of stitch you're doing. And you'll start to realize that certain kinds of stitches work better with certain kinds of needles. All you really need is to know three or four basic hand stitches and you can sew almost anything. It'll take more time. It'll take more patience. You've got to be really careful with your posture. Trust me. <laughs> You've got to really take care of your neck and shoulders so you're not too hunched. But up until the late 1800s, every item of clothing that people wore was made by hand. So are you saying suddenly humans have lost the ability to do this? No, we can still do it. We just need to learn how. And there are plenty of excellent sewing tutorials online showing basic hand stitches by Abby Cox, Bernadette Banner, the big names, not me. <laughs> so once you learn these couple basic stitches, you can sew anything and it will be just as strong and just as functional and sometimes even look better than when it's sewn by mach machine stitch. Now, a couple months ago, I did finally get my first machine and I spent $80 on it. It's not a big, fancy, expensive machine, but it gets the job done and it saves me a little bit of time and effort, especially on straight seams. And my fifth tip is to make a mock-up. Making a mock-up can seem counterintuitive if you're trying to save money because you're using more fabric. You're making a project twice, sometimes more if you need to adjust the fit. However, I think it's really worth it because instead of using maybe a nicer, better fabric that you really like and wasting it, you can use a cheaper fabric or scraps left over from something else just to really make sure that the pattern you're making, whether self-drafted or purchased, is going to work for you. On things like corsets and stays, you absolutely must make a mock-up because it's very fitted and if it doesn't fit correctly, it will be uncomfortable. And I think that is the experience of many actresses. They're wearing a garment that's not properly fitted to them. So you can buy unbleached muslin for about $250 to $3 a yard at a bigger fabric store. And I think last year I bought about 10 yards of it and I'm still working through it. You don't have to mock up the full garment. So for example, if I'm working on my Regency dress that's coming up, I can just do a mock-up of the fitted torso and maybe a little bit of that starting skirt line. I don't need to mock up the entire five yard project. I only need maybe one or two yards just to mock up yeah, the torso, the sleeve, and maybe a little bit of the skirt. But if the skirt is fuller, you don't really need to mock up that whole thing. So it's the same thing when you're mocking up any item. You don't always need to do the whole project. You can also use ugly fabric that you wouldn't use for anything else. This fabric, for example, was given to me by a coworker because she had a whole stash of like baby fabrics that she was making gifts for people with. And then she kind of lost her sewing mojo. When she found out I was sewing again, she passed them all on to me. I don't particularly have baby fever or too many friends who are having babies at the moment. And if I were making them things, I'd probably choose a different fabric anyway. So this ugly baby fabric is actually perfect mock-up fabric. So if you're ever gifted fabric you don't know what to do with because it's really not your style, that's always an option. Use it for your mock-up. And that's enough fabric to mock up like a dress torso, a corset, 
All you need is a couple yards and it'll really help. And then this way you're not wasting the fabric that you really love and maybe spend a little more on. So waste your $2 a yard fabric, not your $10 a yard fabric. So now the question I'm sure you've all been waiting to hear the answer to, how much did I spend on sewing last year? Now, remember a couple of things. This was my first year really getting into sewing, so I did have to buy some basic tools. I bought a small handset grommet kit so I can do lacing holes on corsets. I bought an awl for poking holes and things and eyelets. I bought a sewing machine. Again, not an expensive one, but still. So all things considered, when I did my tallies, I'm self-employed, so I always have lots of spreadsheets tallying up costs and expenses. And so my YouTube sewing Instagram adventures are no different even though they're not currently making any money for me. Eventually they might, so I like to keep track. So when I tallied everything up, the total cost of everything I dedicated to all my sewing projects in the year 2020 was about $850. Now, depending on where you are, that might seem like a lot or not a lot, but what I spent on everything I made is less than some people spend on one costume or one outfit, especially if they're doing something like a gown made of pure silk, right? So last year I did a lot of smaller individual pieces. I didn't do much in the way of outfits because it was more me learning to sew, so doing smaller and simpler projects and building up my own personal wardrobe for history bounding. So your experience might be different. Now this year, I do expect there will be some differences because I already have those basic tools now, but I am also focusing on doing more full outfits. So I'm doing a full Regency outfit. I'm going to be doing a full Baroque Renaissance outfit coming up as well. So it might affect my cost differently, but I'm still going to be doing those money saving methods like using bed sheets and things like that for material. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I look at some sewists and costumers that I really admire here on YouTube and on Instagram, and they're creating amazing things. And they are being very high tech about it using, you know, specialized machinery and just just things that are out of my price range. And sometimes I do wonder, can you even carve out a niche for yourself? in this world of the interwebs if you're not willing to spend a lot of money on it. Whether I've been successful or not, I can't say. All I can say is the amount I spent was really the amount that I could spend. Because for me, like for many, 2020 was a financially difficult year. So I can't lay out thousands and thousands of dollars, and I don't think 2021 is going to be any different. But... That doesn't mean I can't make beautiful things that I'm proud of and I enjoy wearing in my everyday life, and maybe even eventually someday to events. So if you are feeling frustrated and feeling like there's no way you can get into a hobby like sewing and costuming, I'm here to tell you that's not true. And if you don't buy the equipment that I did, if you don't buy a sewing machine, if you don't buy grommet sets, you know, if you do everything by hand, you can spend even less than I did. And if you use more recycled materials, I used some, but I did buy some new materials as well. So it's very possible for you to spend maybe a couple hundred dollars on several items, several costumes. So you shouldn't despair. I don't want anyone to come out of this thinking, I can't do this. This isn't a cheap hobby. It can be as much or as little as you're willing to put into it. However, it gives you joy and satisfaction. And that's nobody's business. So I hope you found this video helpful, maybe inspirational. And I hope that you, if you've been hesitating, aren't going to be afraid to jump into your sewing journey. It really doesn't have to be a world of high-tech machinery and luxurious silks. Just do things by hand, use cotton, and as you get better, you can see if you can afford to dedicate a little bit more to it. But until then, just enjoy yourself. If you enjoyed this video, please stick around, 
see what I'm coming up with next. My next video is actually going to be a project diary. So a little bit different, um, more so in content than this one, but I'm excited to share it with you. And feel free to comment your best budget saving tips for crafting, sewing, costuming in the comments below. Bye.